welcome to the National Press Club. My name is Alan Bierga. I'm a reporter for Bloomberg News and the president of the National Press Club. We're the world's leading professional organization for journalists and are committed to our profession's future through our programming and by offering a free press, fostering a free press worldwide. For more information about the Press Club, please visit our website at s.org slash library. On behalf of our members worldwide, I'd like to welcome our speaker and our attendees at today's events, which includes guests of our speaker as well as working journalists. Ask questions as time permits. I'd now like to introduce our head table guests. From your right, Frank Snellings, a realtor with a member of the National Press Club. Glenn Marcus, an independent writer and producer for public television, also a club member. Emily. Rob Cookrow, editor, Platts. Senator Mary Landrieu, the sister of our speaker. Skipping over our podium, we have Andrew Schneider, chairman of our speaker's committee and associate editor for Kiplinger Washington Editors. Skipping over our speaker for the moment, we ask president of the National Press Club and the club member who organized today's luncheon. Thank you, Don. Jane Campbell, Chief of Staff for Senator Landrieu. Matt Smalla, AP Radio. Tommy Burr, Washington Bureau Chief of the Salt Lake Tribune. And, and a member of the National Press Club from New Orleans. <laughs> On this day, five years ago, a storm to rebuild one of America's great cities, but five years later, New Orleans still grapples with its trauma, with each success tempered by looming challenges ahead. Our speaker today, a two-time Lieutenant Governor of Louisiana, took office as Mayor of New Orleans in May to lead the city out of the muck. He inherited a $67 million budget deficit, a murder rate 10 times the national average, and a massive oil spill off his coastline. <coughs> The son of former New Orleans Mayor Moon Landrieu and brother of Louisiana Senator Mary Landrieu says he will not gloss over his city's problems. He's asked the U.S. Department of Justice to help him reform the city's troubled police department. He's asked BP for a $75 million grain dollars from the city's budget. But questions remain about New Orleans. Can it recover from Katrina and tackle its underlying problems? Mayor Landrieu is here today to tell us about his plan. So please welcome to the National Press Club, New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landry. Thank you all so very much. Uh, to the head table, to all of my guests, Senator Landry, my baby sister. <laughs> The, uh, the folks were wrong. If your telephone's on, the only forgiveness you get if, it's, if it rings or when the saints go marching in, and not Dixie Land Jazz. But thank you so much for having me. We meet today in difficult times. A national economy uh, continues to struggle. Our millions are out of work. After three long months, runaway well in the Gulf is capped. But the die has been cast, and over 200 million gallons of oil need to be cleaned up to save one of the most delicate and important ecosystems in the world. Next week, we will commemorate the fifth anniversary of Katrina. Five years after, I stand here to thank all of you who helped us survive, to recover, and to rebuild. So to the first responders, to the millions of volunteers, the faith-based organizations, the American taxpayers, the cities that took us in, to the many nations of the world who came to our aid, the people of New Orleans, thank you and offer our eternal gratitude. But for both Katrina and the BP oil catastrophe, our future is not just about survival. It's about resurrection. It's about redemption. It's about getting things right. We are not rebuilding the city we were, but we are trying to create the city that we want to become. The world and we deserve a better New Orleans. It has been five years since Katrina stormed through the Gulf. Five years since the levees broke and yes, drowned our city. Five years since floodwaters from the man-made disaster devastated an area nine times the size of Washington, D.C. and displaced more than 1.3 million American citizens. 
Five years and we still grieve for the 1,880, 36 people who lost their lives. However, we come to remember, and we must never forget, that in the fifth year of the 21st century, for four horrific days, there was anarchy on the streets of America. The government failed to do its job, and the people suffered. It's a moment we should never forget, and it is one that we should never repeat. We have had hell and high water, pain and salvation. We survived Katrina, Rita, Ike, Gustav, the Great Recession, and the BP oil catastrophe. And so, the message is clear. Through it all, we are still standing, unbowed, unbroken, and ready to face whatever challenges come our way. Not because we want to, but because we have to. Now, as horrific as they were, neither the BP oil catastrophe nor Hurricane Katrina created our problems. However, they did make them worse, and they made them more visible. For example, crime has been unacceptably high for a generation. We're grappling with an education system that was failing prior to Hurricane Katrina. Our healthcare statistics have always been bleak. We continue to lack affordable housing. When taking office, we were left with a multi-million dollar budget deficit. We have huge infrastructure problems and the number of unlit and unpaid roads continues to mount. Our battle for the heart, the soul, and the future of New Orleans is being waged on many fronts. And faced with these awesome challenges, one could easily turn and could walk away. But we do not have this luxury. And even if we did, it would not be in our nature. Ironically, it is because of Katrina and the BP oil catastrophe and the depth of our problems that New Orleans is uniquely poised to be the city that defines 21st century America. We are building from the ground up and attempting to set the standard for true community renewal in America. We are, in fact, the most immediate laboratory for innovation and change. And our success or failure will be the symbol for America's ability to accomplish great things or not. Creating a 21st century city begins with making our city safe. Upon entering office, we voluntarily entered into a partnership with the Department of Justice. And now we have the full weight of the federal government behind our police department reforms. But a long-term solution to crime must start with providing an excellent education to the next generation of leaders. Since Katrina, we have been on the cutting edge of education reform. In New Orleans, there is no longer a school system but a system of schools that are held accountable, have high standards, focus on results, and engage families. Parents and students choose where to attend schools, and the schools that fail to live up to high standards are not allowed to stay open. But the extraordinary thing about New Orleans public schools is the results. After decades of stagnation, test scores have risen markedly for the last three years. New Orleans is creating solutions not only in criminal justice and education, but also for health care. One of the primary goals of federal health care reform is to usher in a new national primary care network, exactly like the ones currently operating in the city of New Orleans. Today, more than 87 neighborhood health clinics provide primary care to 292,000 residents. This access to care is unparalleled. It is affordable and focused on preventative care. It is rooted in the community. And best of all, it is readily scalable. This is not a dream. This is not an unrealized plan for a distant future. This is healthcare in New Orleans today. But the system is still in peril. New Orleans is so far ahead of the curve that the funding we need right now is not available without further federal or state support. We cannot let them close. Our network of neighborhood-based health clinics is a small part of another bold new idea taking root in New Orleans, place-based community development. This is a holistic approach to revitalizing communities where different public and private entities work together to cluster amenities and close connections to surrounding multi-income housing. When HUD Secretary Sean Donovan came to New Orleans last spring, he went to Columbia Park, a new mixed income development in a high poverty area of the city. The master plan for the surrounding neighborhood includes middle schools and high schools, an early childhood learning center, a recreation facility, libraries, playgrounds, retail, and yes, green space, 
all to serve one neighborhood in New Orleans. Now, Columbia Park is just one of many new place-based community developments underway. New Orleans today is the largest urban planning effort in American history. Together, we will build revitalized communities that are safe, that are healthy, and that are strong. And we can do more. We can do so much more. But in order to get this done, we need to break down the silos that exist across federal, state, and local agencies, both horizontally and vertically. We can't think of housing, health care, and education as separate unrelated policy areas to be addressed in separate parts. Instead, policymakers need to look at the whole. Initiatives must be integrated and coordinated so that all the money hits the ground at the same time and the same place to produce something that is worthwhile. So as New Orleans begins to stand tall again, the people have rallied around our progress to find common ground. A recent study shows that while we continue to struggle, 77% of the residents believe that our city is headed in the right direction, markedly better than in past years. At the end of the day, we all have the same hopes, safe streets, excellent schools, and good jobs. And the people of New Orleans walk together, locked arm in arm, to make our city a better place for all of us to live. In fact, New Orleans is the coolest place in America. <laughs> Passionate young people are streaming into the city. There has been a revival of volunteerism. A vibrant spirit is on display at night in the restaurants and jazz clubs across the city. Last year, we had the biggest Mardi Gras in history, and it's just getting better. In the next four years, we're hosting the Final Four, the BCS Championship, and the 2014 Super Bowl, where I predict the Saints will win their fourth championship in a row. <laughs> Y'all can say who that now. <laughs> since, <a B> <laughs> yeah. since the BP oil catastrophe, President Obama has visited New Orleans twice and will soon join us for the fifth anniversary commemoration of Katrina. From our first day in office, he and his administration have been key partners. 11 out of 15 cabinet secretaries have traveled to New Orleans in the last three months, most more than once. We are deeply appreciative of his support. President Obama believes in New Orleans. Now for every challenge we face, the opportunity and responsibility exist to change, to improve, and to grow. But there is no more complex, no pressing issue than the crisis off of our coast. On April 19th, the BP rig exploded and 11 men lost their lives in this tragedy. And we still grieve for them today. And for nearly three months, BP couldn't find a way to cap that hellish hole, which spewed the equivalent of an Exxon Valdez disaster every four days. Over 200 million gallons of oil flooded into the Gulf, and the effect will be felt for years to come. In the coming months and years, it is estimated that 26 billion in economic output, 24,000 jobs could be lost, not to mention the cost to the suffering families. Everyone is affected. From the oyster processors like Sal Sinceri to shrimpers like Brian Amos, from rig workers like Brett Gibbs to the boat dock operators like Blackie Campo, from hotel workers like Leroy Hawkins to waiters like Steve Raybear, from crane operators like Sean Ryan to tour bus, tour bus operators like Ozzy Laporte, it just keeps going and going and going. The bad economy has already hurt local government with the BP oil catastrophe further impacting revenue. Teachers, police, fire, and other public services are all affected by this cascading and far-reaching crisis. Our entire way of life and our culture is threatened, and every one of us knows what is at stake. It is true that BP has finally capped the hole, and the immediate mission is...